Okay, the next thing I'll be working on for the corn is the rotating base, I believe this is called. Yep. And this is, again, this is from the casting, this is a steel casting, I believe. It's from the original Hemingway's kits, or model engineering services kits, rather, that were produced in the 1970s. And I'll be using this. I'll be using a lot of the techniques that you saw in the machining that Maddie's workshop did. I like the idea of grabbing it in the three jaw, but I, I will have a major departure with mine. Instead of drilling and tapping holes around the periphery of mine, I have a different idea. And that comes from the George H. Thomas, I call it a four inch rotary table, it's really three and three quarters. But just to give you an idea of how small this thing is, here it is in a Whitman sampler chocolate box, which I don't know why I keep it in that, but for some reason I do, with little rust-free tablets. But these, if you can make it out, this thing has a beveled angle inside here. It's the coolest design, and if you need a little rotary table, especially if you have something like a Myford lathe or a small, smaller lathe, 7x12 or 8x14, a rotary table this size can be extremely handy and this was one of the first detailed projects I ever made. I wish I'd have written down, written down what year I made it in but it was a very cool project and I have an idea of emulating the little beveled v-blocks that go inside here and the stops on the outside because they weren't that hard to make and they really really are a nice feature so I'll be talking more about that as, later on as I go through the project, but I love how this came out. This was a solid cylinder of steel for the upper part, and then a solid block of steel for the base, and I made it to the Guy Letard specifications. He sells plans and a booklet. The booklet was extremely helpful because it really takes you step by step, you know, cookbook style about how to make the rotary table. and. Um, you know, again, for my first detailed project, I was really pleased with how it came out. But I'd really like to emulate the v, the v block design on, that uh, George Thomas used on his for when I do the steel rotating base for the corn. So that's just a little teaser there. I'll uh, start to update you as I start working on this thing. Okay, the bottom half of the rotating base is cleaned up nice. Just thought I'd shoot a section of it. Got rid of the interrupted cut. Looking good. I'm going to leave about 20 thou extra of diameter because I'm obviously going to have to clean up the overall thing. So I'll leave myself a little extra for some finishing cuts. Here I've cleaned up the outside. I left 20 thou on the outer edge there. So it's 3 inches and 20 thou. And then I faced off the bottom. That really didn't take much to take to clean that up. And now I'm cleaning off the eccentric little stub there. I've taken, believe it or not, I've taken 115 thou off so far. You can see the shiny part. And I've got the automatic feed on there. I'm taking off 70 RPM and then increments of only 10,000 now. 10 thousandths of an inch. So a cut depth of 5 thou just till I get that to a uniform cut. Here I switched the assembly around so that I could machine the top. I didn't quite get the center stud machined down to a half inch. To get that done later. Just a quick note, as you could see, I had to flip this thing over from one side to the next when I um, machined both sides of it. And I, left, I, I, I turned some of this down on the lathe, but I left a little bit. Um, there because I'm going to machine it flat in, in the mill eventually But since I had to flip it over I've taken great pains to make sure that it's lined up um, You know the, the base of it is is flush as good as it can get So that I, everything should be fine for turning down the little stem there Hey guys, I finally got the lathe to run in reverse I Basically had to repair the switch so I'm cutting down now. I wish I'd have done this before, but I didn't. So I'm machining down, turning down the center stub. It's probably a little difficult to see, but down to a half inch 
diameter for the entire quarter inch length inside from the bottom of the uh, bottom of the part, bottom of the rotating base. So what I'm doing, I'm looking at my z-axis. I set it at zero with the tool just touching. So I'm going down to 0 0.250, just about there. Okay. Excellent. And as you can see, I have about 98,000 to turn off. So I won't video any more of this. Next thing I do, after I finish up getting it all down to the uh, half inch diameter, except for that last little bit, then I'll set the angle and start cutting the cone, and we'll be able to finish it. Hey folks, I'm so happy I got the lathe running again in reverse. Now I'm I finished cutting the stem down to the half inch and I'm starting to cut the cone shape on the inside. Remember I'm using cast steel and it is a lot tougher than the gunmetal kind of part that Maddie's workshop that Maddie was using. But Maddie, I'm indebted to you for coming up with this technique. I'm using a boring bar set that should clear and I'm actually finding it's cutting really good in reverse. Well, of course, the lathe is in reverse, but I'm, I'm drawing the cutting tool towards me, if you will, folks. So you can start to see the cone starting to appear here. There you go. My lathe light is not, not the best, so I've got a little flashlight here. I need to get a, get a drop light I can hand over for detail work. But pretty excited about getting this. I'm going to stop videoing right now so I can put all my attention to it and get the cone cut all the way down to the 45 and that should complete this part. This, this. Okay well I finished turning the outside. It was interesting because I left the the periphery a little bit large if, if you might recall from the earlier segment so I actually had to file down a little bit so that the this part would clear so I could check and make sure that it seats, but it seems to seat nicely in there. And I've taken off a couple of extra cuts just to make sure I've got it fully seated. And um, I, I don't dare take off any more because I don't want it to be loose on the cone after all this work. So I think we've got a nice 45 degree cone here. Let me turn the flashlight on. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna stop work on this for tonight and well, that's not really much help is it anyway stop work on it tonight i think the next part the next obvious things to do are take this out my plan has been all along to grip this in a 5c collet chuck so that i can turn just i left a little like a 20 thousandths rim here turn this down so it's it's perfect you know right at the three inch mark and then of course put it in the mill and mill this part flat and then drill the uh, or bore the 5 8 inch hole so I'm pretty confident I can get those things done this weekend and um, what I might do if I want to take it out maybe first thing in the morning go ahead and or next time I work on it rather put it in the mill and just mill this part flat and then bring it back and put it in the 5 C chuck and then turn the outside and then at that point I'll be I may just I'll, I'll do a, a closing video if I do but I may just stop and publish this video because this shows you the basics of machining the rotating base and then do a whole separate series I'm thinking on cutting the dovetail groove and um, and making the the parts the little V block and nuts the special ones that are the George Thomas style so that's tonight's update really excited that I got the lathe working again and when I finish that figure it all out. I'll publish a separate video about that. Thanks. Alright, I took the rotating base out of the lathe. This all is done in here and I've just machined off the flat, made it flush with, uh, with the rim that will be turned. So the next thing I'll do is I'll offset from the base here an inch and three sixteenths and drill and bore the five eighths inch hole that goes through the upper tool holder part. Okay, I didn't take video of it, but it's pretty obvious. I just uh, drilled and reamed out the 5 8 inch hole here for the tool holder rod. And the next thing to do will be to drill and tap for the set screw through the top. 
All right, I got the part back in the lathe. As you can see, I've got it chucked up in the 5C collet chuck. I'm just taking my first skim cut on the outside, just taking a couple thou off just to see where I'm at and get a measurement. And um, glad I have this set up. I'll keep you posted as I get it down. All, all I'm simply doing is turning it down to the three inch, three inch outside diameter. Should be the last cleanup cut. I am glad I left the 15 thou or about 20 thou extra so since I was going to machine it this way. It's, it's cleaning up pretty good. This should put it right at three inches, maybe three inches plus a thou or something, and then I can just file it to get a nice smooth finish before I start cutting the initial cuts of the dovetail groove. So, pretty happy with this so far. Well, happily, I've got this thing down to exactly three inches on the diameter, near as I can measure it. And I did, I took a couple extra minutes to file it and um, run some sandpaper over it to make it smooth since it's going to be engraved with graduation marks. So the next steps will be to cut the groove that's going to become the dovetail groove. Okay folks, here is the rotating base with the basically all of the machining done, the preliminary machining done, or the easy stuff before I get to cutting the bevel angle, which just for a refresher, so I cut the slot uh, 219 thousandths wide and 190 deep so far, and all I've got to do now is I've got to sharpen up my little um, 3 16 inch diameter tools and the and figure out the holder that I'm going to use since this is a different lathe and I haven't had a chance to do all that yet but what I was thinking is I probably have enough little segments of machining to get up to this point that I'll put all this together and make this one video and then I'll do a whole nother segment on cutting the little dovetail angles which I'll, I'll be doing that soon but um, doing the angles and then making the v-blocks and all because I don't think anybody's ever covered that on YouTube so this will be the last segment and I appreciate everybody let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and we'll uh, keep you posted